Hello everyone and welcome to Newark Penn Station. Today I'm taking the Palmetto down to Baltimore, which is what I would have said in an alternate reality where things had gone to plan. But today, find out how this journey went totally off the rails. My trip starts at the crack of dawn in Newark, New Jersey. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock, you will know that Newark Penn Station doesn't have the best reputation. While the building itself is beautiful, dating back to the early 1900s, the station itself isn't really well kept. There's lots of homeless people, as well as pigeons, around the train station. The station itself also smells like urine, which isn't the most welcoming. The station isn't all bad though, as Amtrak has updated their quick track machines here, and the wayfinding at the station isn't too bad as well. In anticipation of our train's arrival, we headed to track 3 to wait for our train to Baltimore. However, this is where the trouble started. At first, it was just a small delay of around 15 minutes. No worries, I thought. This is the Northeast Corridor. After all, Amtrak does own the tracks, so the train should be here in no time, right? Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. As trains came and went, came and went, soon the sun even started to rise, and our train was still nowhere in sight. So, what was the cause of this delay, you might ask? Well, I'm not entirely sure. However, the Amtrak staff at the station told us it was a form of a mechanical problem with the cars on the train. Speaking of the Amtrak staff, they told us that we could hitch a ride on the incoming Northeast Regional train bound for Washington, D.C., and our tickets would be interchangeable. So that's exactly what we did, and we hopped aboard Northeast Regional number 183 and we were finally going to Baltimore. Alrighty, so we are finally on board. We're on train 183, not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, I thought I was going to be on an Amfleet 2 today, but looks like that's not the case. In any case, still happy to be on a train, so let's go to Baltimore. So we finally depart Newark around an hour late. In any case, we still got to enjoy this beautiful sunrise coming out of Newark, New Jersey. So let's take a quick look around our seat. The seat I've chosen is located near the vestibule and it features an astronomical amount of legroom. Another additional benefit of this seat is that we get not only two but four power sockets due to there being no seat in front of us. 
Since this is coach class on Amtrak, there is no window blind. That is a business class feature. Lastly, there are also some reading lights located above your seat. These seats are also pretty comfortable, being really plush and well padded throughout. They also feature a decent amount of recline, better than anything you'll be finding on a domestic airplane. buying some breakfast from the cafe car, I'm heading back to my seat. And as you can see, these seats in coach class are laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration of mostly airline style seats. Something that caught me by surprise is that these trains featured what I like to call the good Amtrak business class. These seats are featured on Amtrak's down Easter train, which runs between Boston and Brunswick. Now, usually on the Northeast Regional, we have what I like to call the bad Amtrak business class, in which the seats are literally copies of their coach class counterparts, just with some extra legroom and some window blinds, as well as tables in their bays of four. And while we're at it exploring the train, let's take a quick look at the lavatories found on board. Hello and welcome on board the Northeast Regional Bathroom. So, uh, I'm going to take you on the news. Not exactly in the worst shape, but not exactly in the best either. We have the uh, classic Amtrak toilet with the blue, um, I guess, toilet water, which you can take that as you will. Let's see if it flushes. Black to 
tell you to enjoy the journey. Yes, I will land track. I will enjoy this. And I love riding trains. Uh, there's also a cookbook. And uh, decent lighting. Well, a pretty decent bathroom, but the ones on the venture cars that's currently only on Amtrak Midwest are like probably 10 times better than this. So, uh, can't wait to try them out on the Northeast Corridor. Hopefully, they will be in service soon and replace the Amfleets. Well, I mean, I'll never know. At this point, we had crossed into the state of Maryland, which was undoubtedly the scenic highlight of the entire trip down to Baltimore.
as we start to approach Baltimore, what are my conclusions about this trip? Well, this is definitely a mixed bag. On one hand, the delay at Newark was quite the bummer, and I was hoping to try out a Amfleet 2 coach for the first time, but that didn't really work out. On the other, the rest of the trip was completely normal, with no holdups and pleasant and sometimes even picturesque scenery. Lastly, this trip wasn't cheap, due to it being booked just a couple days in advance around the Christmas holiday season, in which Amtrak is notorious for ramping up ticket prices. This trip was in the 1-200 to 200 range, and considering the events that unfolded, it makes me think twice when booking Amtrak again for another trip. But overall, this trip should just serve as a reminder that, no matter what, traveling by train in the US, or anywhere for that matter, does not always go to plan. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it at least a bit informative. If you liked the video, hopefully you consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And this is the 4905 here, and I will see you next time. Take care. Next station stop will be Baltimore Train Station. If that is your final destination, please take the time out to gather your personal belongings. Check your seats to make sure nothing is left behind. When exiting the train, please pause the gap between the train and the platform. Next station.